PC, what's up guys? Back again, six months later. Man, it's been a while. And you know, I, I, I had so much stuff lined up to do videos, but but been bit so busy, you know, with work and still trying to get my house together and stuff. I'm doing like, you know, the Bob Vila home improvement stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna get on here and I'm gonna do the uh, 10 most uh, most listened to albums that was done by uh, Chris from The Long Cut. Oh, I'm definitely gonna do that and I'm gonna show this VCLT that I got from Michael Mueller from Balmoray. You know, you remember him from The Four Corners with Mazzy and 45 uh, Audiophile when he was doing those videos during the pandemic, man. I still keep in touch with Michael. He's like the uh, guitarist and multi-instrumentalist for this band, Balmoray, Pendant World. This was the one he sent me, man. I really dig this album, man. This album is amazing. I played, I actually uploaded this on my Instagram and I had so many people asking me, what album is this? And they went out and downloaded and bought it and they picked it up and it was cool that it, it, it uh, inspired a lot of people to pick this up. But uh, man, this album, I've been spinning this nonstop for the last, about a week and a half since I got it. Oh boy, sent it to me in the mail. And it's, man, I've been, this is some marvelous VCLT. This was their second release on uh, Dorsch Gramophone. The opening track, Non Plus, is so, it just, it takes you, it almost like takes you to another space, another world. And I mean, this is, put together well I have to commend the band members I know the main ones are uh, Michael Mueller and Rob Law who are the main the main cats but yeah man Michael I really dig this oh man violent shiver it's, it's so much stuff on here man it's for, from everything that came out this year this is definitely one of my tops if I will pick a, a album of the year this year this is definitely on the top but yeah Balma Ray Preston Germany quiet vinyl as soon as I threw it on it was just quiet man Michael I really appreciate it man great stuff man we actually definitely got to do a video together man definitely I'm gonna go over my 10 that I always spend usually when I pull these 10 I either it's because I want to test out the new sound I tested that with the, uh, I tested it with when I had got my speakers, my uh, Focal speakers and the Moran amp. I tried, uh, either, this is the stuff I always play. Okay, the first one I'm gonna go with, of course, you gotta pick this one, the final album by Roxy Music, Avalon. Space Between, India, More Than This. Man, you are talking about, the main thing too, can't forget that one. But yeah, this is my, uh, I finally got a UK one I picked up. I've been spending the Simply Vinyls very close. I was surprised how close the Simply Vinyl to this one. But this is one of them, this is my number one. Number two, gotta go into the jazz realm. You can't do it without jazz. You know, everybody knows I'm, I'm a big jazz head. When I pull Cold Train, this is the Cold Train I always pull. This was one of the first Impulse records I bought. And um, this one has some killer tracks on here. The opening track, Out of This World. And then um, it goes into Soul Eyes, which was written by Mal Waldron. This is a 1962, this is an original press. And Tunji on side two, this is the gatefold from it. And uh, yeah, everybody know the, the white label promo. I used to do those white label promos. But when I play, whenever I play any Cold Train, this is always the one I always pick up and grab. And definitely, they should do an acoustic sounds on it. I know they did an analog productions, but that's been some years. But they should do an updated version of this. This would have been cool. It would be a cool reissue. That was number two. Number three. Yeah, Betty. 1988, Stronger Than Pride. This is the Kevin Gray cut, the audio fidelity. 
the best sounding version of this album. I, I've, I've heard the half speed, the half speed I will put second. And then of course the original. But yeah, Stronger Than Pride, that's one I always throw on to to test my systems. Or if I have friends over, I throw this on. Cause they were like, I wanna hear Sade. And um, you know, this, man, so many killers on here. Oh, and the bass on there, Turn My Back On You. That's, that's another killer on here too. Oh yeah, the audio fidelity. That was number three. Number four, 1985's Dead Can Dance. Oh yeah, you knew I was gonna pull one of those out. Everybody know I'm a big Dead Can Dance fan. This album is so important to me with as far as they stuff. I always throw it on. This is when they got, they found a sound most of the early, like the self-titled one before this one is more raw. This one right here is when they came with the, almost like a concept. But yeah, Killers on here, man. Advent, what was it? Uh, Advent, um, the indoc indoctrination of, I always say this wrong, A Design for Living. It's actually a killer song too. But yeah, Lisa Gerard, Brendan Perry. 85. So that was number four. And I'm going to go back into the jazz stuff. Matheny. Like Minds. Look at that lineup. Gary Burton. Chick Corea. Matheny. Of course, Haynes. And then you got old boy on here too, Dave Holland, which I got to meet Dave Holland at one of the jazz fests some years back. But yeah, this one was cut by Stan Ricker. It came out in 98, but it wasn't released until the 2000s. But this is audio file at the fullest. I never see many people show this. I, don't, I never seen anybody show this. This album flows, man. Tracks like Question and Answers, Windows, and uh, what's the one on here? Yeah, Bags, they do a uh, Bags Groove, the Milton Jackson uh, composition. And it's funny, when they did this album, they got together with this album. This one came out in 1990. And this is pretty much the same lineup. Matheny, Roy Haynes, and Dave Holland. So all he added on Like Minds was, was Burton and Korea. Chick Korea on there. So that's another one of the 10 that I play. Then... New Wave, 78, Costello. I remember when I first got into Costello, it was, um, it wasn't King of America. It was, uh, I always get, I always, well, it's between King of America and, yeah, Armed Forces was one of the ones, was the first album I heard by him. And that was like in the 90s, 97 is when I got into him. And then I heard this album and I always been, you know, go back to this album. Lipstick Vogue. Man, uh, I don't want to go to Chelsea. Man, there's so many killers on here. This is like new wave punk. I mean, he just kicked in the door. But the special story about this is really tripped out. I remember as a kid, I want to say I was like six years old. And I remember my mom and them used to watch Saturday Night Live. And I remember getting up in the middle of the night and I remember him performing on there. It was like 77 or 78. He comes on there. He says, stop the music, stop the music. And he does radio, radio, which is on this version. They, I was so glad that Ryan K. Smith remastered this album and added radio on there. Cause on the original, it doesn't have radio, radio. But that's, I remember hearing that song and it stuck with me until years later, I found out who originally did that. And it was, uh, you know, it turned me on to a lot of his stuff. Man, Punch the Clock, Imperial Bedroom. Man, he's, this dude is like a killer songwriter, man. Killer songwriter. I respect him, man. Another one, we're gonna go back to the 60s. Well, 1971, Jim, well, in the late 60s, I know he was more of, he was the front man and he grew, and then years later he grew a beard. 
I always throw this on, the changeling. This thing just gets you up and just gets you geeked up and ready to go. I mean, and then this analog production by Doug Sachs. This is definitely one. I always, I pull this one. My favorite album is Strange Days, but this one, I always pick this one up because it just gets you, get your blood pumped, man, when you hear that, that changeling, an L.A. woman, Rider of the Storm. I mean, pfft, L. America, L. America. You know, there's a lot of, and been down too long, and you could tell you listen to a lot of blues, too. There's a little blues in there, but the band was on top-notch plan on this album. 71's Doors, L.A. Woman. Then I go with Eno. I got a ton of Eno, which I got into when I got into the Bowie stuff. You know, the uh, the Bowie stuff from the 70s. This Eno here, Atmospheres and Soundtracks, which was influenced by him seeing the space shuttle. Man, I, when I bought, I picked this up. And I was floored how, the, how it sounds. I always throw this on late at night. And it's, it takes you almost like you're in space, like you're in a spaceship. Eno is definitely one of the gifted ones, man, as far as putting sounds together. You can see why he worked with, like, Talking Heads, The Name of You. And then, of course, he was with Roxy Music, early Roxy Music. Eno was a bad dude, man. And then you too, also. Can't forget U2, he did stuff for U2. But yeah, this atmosphere is, and soundtracks, this is the the complete, this is the extended. And plus they remastered this in half speed. I, I got an original, this one kills the original. It sounds so textured and it's just like, wow. Brian Eno, atmospheres. I'm gonna go back into the 60s. I always pull this album. I always pull this album. I had to cover that up. This is one of the first records I bought back in the uh, 90s. I covered that up. But uh, Electric Ladyland, Jimmy, Gypsy Eyes. When he got uh, got uh, Jack Cassidy and what is that, Steve Winwood to work, work with them on here, 1968. This was like the swan song, a double album. <sighs> yeah, Jimmy was the guitar, the guitar work, and the uh, Voodoo Child. You got the Voodoo Child, a slight return, and then the straight Voodoo Child. I play that track, the straight Voodoo Child, when he's just jamming, you hear all the influence, Holland Wolf, Albert King, you can hear all of, he let his fingers do the walking on the guitar, man. Jimmy, I always play this record. And it's tripped out. Acts as bold as love, I will say, is my favorite, but it's something about this one that it could go either or with Jimmy, man. Jimmy is, <laughs> Jimmy was just Jimmy, man. He had that gift, man. And then my last and final one, 1966, Blonde on Blonde. This was, this is another one of the records. After I bought that Jimmy, I bought, I started getting heavy into the Dylan stuff, the electric Dylan, because it all goes hand in hand. Jimmy was definitely inspired by this guy here, man. The songwriting and stuff like that. Dylan, Dylan is one important figure in the 20th century. But yeah, here's my original copy I bought. This place was going out of business called Quaker Goes Deaf. Yeah, it has the lady in the cover. It's, yep, this is the original. Clean. This is crystal clean. You barely see any ring wear. I, man, I got, I have multiple copies of this. I have the Binary Please, the Mofi. But yeah, this Dylan here, man, I, everybody knows all the songs. I, I, you know, I don't even want to go over the songs. This is a classic. And, you know, it could go as my favorite Dylan, but it's between this and Desire. And of course that one up there, Highway. It, it, it could be either or Dylan, but th this one here is a, is a killer. I always throw this one on. I mean, man. But yeah, Chris, that was a great 10. 
it's it's great video and it inspired a lot of videos behind it, man. But yeah, guys, it's glad to be back. Glad to be back. I think that was 10. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more because I know everybody's been doing 11. I'm going to do one more. I have it off to the side. 63, Joe Henderson, Page One, McCoy, Butch, LaRoca, La Roca, Joe Henderson, Killer. And I can't forget Kenny Dorham. I always throw this on to uh, Blue Bossa Nova, Recording Me. Blue Boss Nova, of course, is Kenny Durham and recording me at uh, Joe Henderson. I always throw this on. This is the music matters. But yeah, man, I'm back. You're going to see some more videos. I'm not going to disappear forever. I got to do some more videos. A lot of new releases. I picked up a ton this year. Okay, guys? But yeah. Great thread. And man, a lot of new stuff. A lot of great reissues. Definitely been jumping on them. Peace out, guys.